and good morning everyone so we are now on the first job of the day this is a ford transit with immobilizer fault so today we are going to be diagnosing it and see what's wrong a technician's already been out uh, to check what the issue is technician this is for my hater a technician has already been out to check what's wrong with this and as you can see here they have replaced already the good old ring so as you can see they have replaced the original one that's in there with a brand new part as you can see right there it is also Ford so hopefully that is not just a dud ring so we'll get started we're gonna do a few checks first just to make sure that everything is okay I like the wiring on this to see if that's fine I want to see if I am actually just a fitter or a technician We'll see, let's go. All right, so this is the first thing that we're gonna do. We're obviously gonna scan it to check what that fault is about because it's just coming up with immobilizer malfunction on the dash. So we're gonna be checking control modules, see if they are working okay or not. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, All right, so we can see voltage low here, vehicle communication bus A, lost power communication ECM, body control module. So it's basically lost all of the, yeah, all of the control modules. Yes, it seems like this had a low battery to begin with. Anti-lock braking system, instrument panel, the, the LIN, network bus D. So yeah, yep, these are all faults for low battery. So we're gonna test to see if the battery is actually low, but from what I can see, it's got 12.2 volts, so they probably replaced the battery. So I'm gonna be testing that, and also I'm gonna be checking grounds just to make sure that everything is okay. So from the looks of it, they have just recently replaced this battery. Um, seems like they got the best of the kind lion battery but yeah okay good luck on that i'll probably lost your year we're going to be testing that one right so it seems like the battery is okay as you can see there it just says good and recharge 46 percent on the state of charge i guess that's okay it's at 12.18 volts as you can see right there 12.18 volts so now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be checking the grounds under the bonnet that connects onto the main fuse box all right, so our grounds checks to be okay. There's one there. There's another one on the main wire over there. And then what's the other one that I checked? Which is only for the headlight anyway. But yeah, so everything under here checks out okay. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be checking the topology and see how these control modules work together because it's saying lost communication here on the restraint control module for whatever reason. Instrument panel is saying that it's lost communication with ABS. That's why if you can see here, it's not showing PCM is remember it's not showing the ABS it's saying no response and as you know ABS is present on this because it's 2016 so it's definitely got that control module so I'm going to be checking the topology to see if the systems how the systems work together and then we can figure something out once we get there all right so I've just checked the topology and also I'm checking the wiring diagram on Haynes right now and the ESP or the ABS and PCM and the central locking are all connected together so I am going to be checking those three control modules to see where it is um, I'm reading it right now for you hater right there I can read right um, so I'm going to be checking the fuses and I'm also going to be checking other stuff as well such as the um, CAN bus communication system see if they're all working and stuff like that but first I'm gonna start with the very very basic which is to check all the fuses so I'll be back in a minute All right guys, so we are actually back on this Ford Transit. I didn't manage to record it because it was actually kind of like pissing me off in a bit. But we managed to track down what's wrong with the vehicle, the reason why it couldn't start. It's a faulty ABS control module. We use the scope, so hand bus high and low, all works out fine. But as soon as we test it, right over here, we're basically getting crappy signal from here. So I thought, you know what, I'll short it because this is the one that's coming from the ABS. 
So once I've joined them together, the car actually started, which is nice. So we can verify that the ABS pump or the module rather is actually at fault. So I'm going to let the customer know and see what he thinks about it. Oh, what a long day. I spent about two, three hours in this now. So job well done, I would say. It's up to the customer now what he wants to do. So here is the diagram of the whole system that I diagnosed. So as you can see, the PCM, ABS, the RCM, it's all connected and um, all of them is actually part of the anti-theft system so as you as you would see here on the abs system module c135 um, that connects all the way to the power control module so um, at the connector 100 that you can see here i'm gonna highlight it um, that's where i joined the wires together and we managed to communicate with the ABS. By doing that, you're basically tricking the system, saying that the CAN network is complete and that the ABS is reporting back. Um, and as you know, if you've got a 40 um, CAN network within a control module, that whole thing will basically shut down. So it's just a little trick to tell the computer, hey, I'm okay, it's uh, time for you to start, basically. That's what it is. So yeah, that's the one. That's, this is the diagram that I used. So that's us done on that Ford Transit. Just so you guys know, that is only a shortcut. You must do your testing properly. I had to test the restraint control module, test the PCM, the ABS module, of course, I had to test that as well. Anything that is part of the immobilizer system, you must test to make sure that it is that. The only reason how I found out that it is actually the ABS system is because whenever I go into the CAN system of the ABS, when I back probe it, I get nothing in return. So that tells me that that ABS system, it's got the ABS control module has got an internal fault instead of it being external fault, like on the wirings and stuff like that. To test it, you have to make sure that your wire resistance is good, your supply voltage, etc., is good. So make sure that all of that is fine. But obviously, now I've done most of the testing, you can use it as a shortcut if you are trying to find out what's wrong with your car. But it's only a guide, a rough idea of what it may be. But with this one, it's definitely his ABS control module. So I think he's gonna repair it himself or he's gonna get it sorted out elsewhere. So happy days, happy for the customer. I'm happy that we found out what the issue is. So thanks very much. We are on to the next job now, which is a top mount for a Honda Civic, I think. I'm on to the next job, we go, All right? all right everybody so we are now on the second job this is the honda civic that we did diagnose this morning for the suspension my she is hearing clunking noises whenever she go over a bump and i'll show you again what's wrong with this vehicle check this out yeah that top man is replacing let's get it done Oh, and that is how you almost die twice. Twice. Qualified technicians only. <laughs> so 
So good morning everyone. This is a Vauxhall Zafira, the two 1.6 or two litre petrol. Anyway, well we got called here and he said that his belt snapped, which is true. His belt okay, truly snap. did snap. But the main cause of that is actually the alternator failing. I'll show you in a second if you see it, have a look here. There you have it. So at first he heard a squealing noise and a few minutes later he heard a snap that came from the alternator belt. So as you can see there, this had probably moved along, yeah, caused this to happen or what might have happened is the belt actually went in between here and caused this pulley or even it's actually the alternator that's broken now. As you can see that part over there, you can't see it on the camera, but in between there you'll see like aluminium pieces basically. As you can see here, it's all grinded off and all that stuff. So we're gonna be removing that. Um, I'm not sure yet whether to remove it from underneath or remove it from up here. Right, more theory. All right, just a little bit more theory of what's happened. I've just moved it aside now, but you see this, this foam looking thing here. I think it was flapping around and the bell must have caught it and caused this to happen more than anything else because when we stripped it, we won't really know, would we? But when we stripped it, you can see all this wrapped around the belt. So yeah, that might have caused it and not the alternator actually failing. But yeah, we'll get to it. It's an 18 mil bolt that you need to remove at the bottom right there. And then there is another one on the other side. So we're gonna be removing the alternator from the underside instead of here because the space underneath is much greater. We'll show you in a minute. All right, so here we are from underneath. That's the front of the car. And as you come here, you'll see that there is enough space for the alternator to come out on this side. So we've removed the one at the bottom from the other side. And now it's just one 18 mil bolt up top, right over there that's holding the alternator. And then obviously you have to remove the LIN cable as well, or CAN, whichever one they use, which is that connector there. And now we have to remove the 13 mil positive wire that's coming out from this alternator. So we get to that. It's gonna be difficult to record, but we can manage, I think. Calling me what? Oh, it's not a big guy. It is. All right, okay. Hopefully it fits in this hole. All right, let go. Let go. Let go, man. This comedian, bro. Comes out in an angle, and there we go. Oh. So as you can see there, that's finished. Now we'll check the other pulleys as well, just to make sure that nothing else has failed. That pulley is okay. This pulley is okay. AC pulley is actually okay as well. So yeah, it's just the alternator that we have to replace. Let's go get the new part. There you go. Thank you. Nice. Thank you, sir. Take this off. <laughs> Get here. <laughs> so we are back here. The alternator has to go back up again. Right, obviously it's difficult to uh, record whilst putting this belt in, but for your reference, it's like that. If you want to, if you're in this job and you want to do it, it goes from the crank, aircon, all the way at the top to this pulley here, and then back around to that pulley, going up to the alternator, down alternator, to the tensioner, back to the crank. So we're gonna start it up and then hopefully it doesn't break again and eat that little fluff looking things. Catch you in a minute. All right, start her up. Yep, I'm gonna stay away from it just in case it slaps me in the face. Uh, 
Perfect. All right, guys. So that was our near-death experience of the day. And that is where it ends. I'm going to go home, relax, spend time with my kid, my missus, just to make sure that I am still alive. So thank you very much for watching. And we will catch you on the next one. Peace. What are you doing, John? Pull me out. Pull me out. <laughs> yeah. oh, <God>. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs>